Good morning, Church, and welcome to Subic Bay Community of Faith's online Sunday worship. As we call ourselves to worship the Lord, let us read from the Word of God. Psalm chapter 37, verse 3 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Let us worship the Lord together.
Building Church. A couple of weeks ago, we just wrapped up our sermon series, Intentional Church Home Base, which focused on the first part of the book of Acts. For me personally, I had a lot of fun studying these chapters together as a church family. I remember as part of the ManCom team, when we envisioned how we wanted to approach this study, we all agreed that we wanted to find parallels to how the first century Christians worship God to how we can do the same today. Throughout our study, there was one verse that stood out to me, and that's in Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 34, which says, Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common, and with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. You know, this verse is actually an echo of a previous chapter in chapter 2, which says, this is verse 44, And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. You know, when you really sit and think about these two verses, when it says that there were no needy persons, it's basically saying that everyone was satisfied. Everyone was good. Have you actually thought about what it would take to get that many people to get to that point? That means there had to be a clear intention for someone to look at another and say, hey, that person needs something, but I have plenty. I'm going to give some to them. Or I can see that my brother in Christ is missing something. I want to provide for him. That was happening all throughout that community until the point that it became balanced. And for them, because they had no need, there was only one thing left for them to focus on. God. You know, my wife was actually one of the people who was, who was in the category of no work, no pay. So we struggled for a bit. Until one day, a friend messaged me and asked for some pesto. For those of you who know, my wife has a side cooking business. Anyway, I had to apologize that we didn't have any available. She asked why and I explained it was because our blender broke. I was shocked when our friend said, I'm not using mine, I'll give it to you guys. As you might imagine, my wife was ecstatic. I found the kitchen in complete disarray the next morning because she woke up early and just started blending things and baking cakes and all that. This very simple and generous act of kindness from one friend seeing that another was in need help put our family in a position without any major distractions, allowing us to focus on what is truly important, and that is in helping to build God's kingdom. Church, let's do something today to help our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, so that in each of our capacity, we could help our community have no needy persons. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you today and we pray that our tithes and our offerings would uh, help in building up your kingdom. We pray that you give us a heart to um, help our brothers and sisters in need. And we also pray for our dear brother, Pastor Jim, that you anoint his lips as he delivers our message for today. And this we pray in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. I pray that everyone is doing well and good today. Well, are you guys surprised that I am here behind the pulpit today? Well, I am too. To be completely honest with you, I am more than surprised than you are. You know what? God has his ways of really surprising people and doing things that we once thought we could never do. Have you ever had an experience like this? Like one day you're minding your own business, the next day, poof, 
You're doing the things that you have not even imagined that you could do. Something like this. I never imagined to be preaching, but here I am. You know what? I started off just like you. Just like any other regular church goer. I went to church every Sunday. I sat in the audience, listened to the pastor, etc. The whole nine yards. And then one day, one fateful day, I was given an opportunity to serve. So I joined the worship team. And then, here I am now, in front of all of you, standing behind this sacred pulpit. Surprising, right? This is how God operates. He will call you to do something great for His name. Let me repeat that. He will call you to do something great for His name. And this experience reminds me of a man in the Bible named Joshua who was commissioned by the Lord to do great things for His name. The title of our message today is Commissioned. And if you have your Bibles with you, please open it up on Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. And let me call my brother Chris to read the verses. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, Chris. Let's commit to the Lord the study of the proclamation of His Word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We just thank you for who you are, for what you have done for us. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to go deeper and to learn more of who you are and how you function in our lives and how you make your will possible for our lives, Father. Lord, as we go deeper into your word, as we dig deeper into your word, Father, open our hearts, open our minds, and open our souls, Lord, so that we may understand you more and so that we would be able to apply whatever that we will be learning today, Lord, into our lives. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the main idea of our passage for today is this. Be confident in God's great promise when challenged to carry out His commission and instructions for us. Now let us take a closer look on what God does when He commissions. First, let me tell you who Joshua is. According to the books of Exodus, Numbers, and of course Joshua, he was a God-fearing man, a faithful follower of Moses, and a great leader with a servant heart. He was actually one of Moses' generals. And in Exodus 17, 13, if you have the time, kindly go ahead and read that. This is where we would first encounter who Joshua is. He may not have been any ordinary man, but he was a servant nonetheless. Look, we all know who Moses was and how God worked in him in leading a great number of people out of Egypt 
into the land that God had promised to them. Unfortunately, Moses was not able to bring the people into that land. And upon his death, God needed a new leader. It is tough to fill the shoes of this great man of God. But if we look closer in verse 2, it is implied that Joshua was commissioned by God to step up as that leader for his people. And he spoke to Joshua directly saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Joshua's first challenge from God himself was to arise. Imagine how he might have felt when God told him this. Look, it might have went something like this. Hey Joshua, I know you've heard what happened to Moses. Yeah, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken. Joshua, I have something for you to do. Lord, anything for you, Lord. I would do anything for you. That's my boy. I want you to lead this people into the promised land I promised Moses. What? Imagine leading this lot of people. The same hard-headed, complaining, rebellious, and faithless people that Moses had to deal with. One can only imagine the anxiety he must have felt and the challenges that he might have faced. You know, in one way or another, I believe that we, are, we all can relate to Joshua. Personally, I know that I can identify with him. Joshua was just but a mere follower of Moses. And all of a sudden, he was being tasked by God to do something great. He was given a greater responsibility. God commissioned Joshua to carry out his plan for the people. We may not know how God chooses people for his work, but one thing, one thing I am certain of is that in God's plan, we are all being called and commissioned. Let me repeat that. In God's plan, we are all being called and commissioned. Let me tell you a story. About five years ago, I had this sense that God wanted me to do more for him. But I shrugged it off, continued minding my own business. You know, the same old gym, same old routine, enjoying life, enjoying my music, enjoying, and enjoying church. That was all I wanted to do, and that was all I think I needed to do. I was really comfortable in doing it, very, very comfortable. And I thought that, you know, this is it. This is what I need to do, and this is what will save me. But God had a different plan for me, and God had a different plan for my journey with him. Bit by tiny bit, God was directing me, and he was showing me his ways so that I could step up more for him. Bit by bit, God was calling me to. God was calling me to arise for him. Two years ago, the burden of going into the full-time ministry resurfaced. This time, I could feel that this is more intense than what I have felt five years before. Honestly, it scared me. It scared me so much knowing the gravity of what God wanted me to do for His kingdom. But the prompting was all too real. And I knew it was God Himself calling me. So I closed my eyes 
I took a leap of faith and I prayed hard. And I followed his prompting to go into the seminary, which led me to the International Graduate School of Leadership. Just like Joshua, God was asking me to do something I was not confident in doing, not even in my wildest dreams. Joshua was asked by God to usher his people to the promised land. And for me, I was being led by God, first as a musician, then as a small group leader, and now as a youth pastor and a minister. But you know what? This assignment, compared to Joshua's God-sized task, is nothing. Look, we are all being tasked by God to love His people and to share His gospel of salvation that is found only in one man, Jesus Christ. But in doing so, there is a lot at stake. And of course, there will be challenges along the way. But there is a great affirmation in the following verse. Let us take a closer look at God's promise in verse 5. Verse 5 says, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. God must have sensed Joshua's fear and uncertainty. So he gave Joshua such a wonderful promise. You know what? This is similar to God's promise to Moses in Exodus 3.12. And God said to Joshua, first, no man would stand against him. That God would always be with him. And that he would never fail or forsake him. Wow. Talk about the ultimate encouragement, huh? I remember the very first day I stepped into IGSL. I was full of doubt and fear. I remember going into our orientation. I could feel the stares of the people. And I looked around the room. They were very prim and proper. Like, you know, very pastorly. And there I was, bearded. This is short now. It was longer before. Ungroomed. I was just wearing a shirt and tattooed. I was like a fish out of water. I was culture shocked by everything, by everything. Everything's new in this environment. But deep inside, I also feared that I wouldn't make it. And I would fail on my very first term. The very first night I spent at IGSL, I was laying in my bed at BH213. That's my room number. I had this initial feeling to pack my things up, board the bus, and just go home and run away from it all. I struggled with this feeling, but then I was reminded by God's Spirit. I was praying that night. I was reminded by God's Spirit that everything had already been provided, that God had already orchestrated everything for me. I have my scholarship. I have housing, food, and transportation allowances. His affirmation for my calling was evident in every single step that I take. And he also provided good friends and brothers and sisters in IGSL. I would like to make a shout out to all of my friends and brothers and sisters in IGSL. And most especially, I would like to thank the support of my church family, SBCF. I could tell you a lot of stories on how God sustained me when I decided to follow Him full-time. With confidence, I can say that from day one, He had never failed me. And I know that He will never fail me. Why am I saying this? You might be asking, why am I saying this? Because the same words 
that God gave Joshua was just as real to me when he said, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Our Lord Jesus said a similar promise to us, to us in Matthew 28, in verses 19 to 20. We all know this as the Great Commission verse. Jesus made a promise and he said, I will be with you until the very end of the age. Wow! His father's promise to Joshua is also Jesus' promise to us. Mind-blowing, right? Now, looking back at Joshua, when God said this to him, you know, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that he was strengthened by it too. He was backed by a God who loves his people. This same God is the one that sent Jesus to us. And he promised never to leave us, nor to forsake us. When God calls us to do great things for him, let us be reminded that God will be with you, will be with us every step of the way. That is God's promise to us. Fear should have no room in our lives, for we have God in our hearts. Fear should have no room in our lives, for we have God in our hearts. And what does God say about fear? How, we, how should we react to fear? Let us take a look in the following verses. Verses 6 to 9 says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is, wherever, is with you wherever you go. When I was much younger, I used to practice Taekwondo. See the picture? It's not evident now, but yes, I used to practice Taekwondo. And oftentimes, before we stepped onto the mat for a tournament, there was always this lingering feeling of nervousness. I remember my coach would always say to me, Remember your training. You work hard for this. Chin up. You can do it. Listen to my instructions. When God commissioned Joshua and made a promise to him, he also instructed Joshua on what he needed to do. God was Joshua's coach. And what did God instruct him? He repeated it three times. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. But how do we do this? We can be strong and courageous by following the word of the Lord in every single thing that we do. Let's take a closer look. It says in our passage to first, be careful to do according to the law. This is God's word. Do not turn from it to the right or left. We must Focus on the truth and the truth alone. It shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it. We must read and understand God and His words. 
do according to all that is written in it. Very important to apply everything that we have read into our lives. By doing all this, God will make our lives prosperous and we will grow personally and spiritually in our inner being. Oh, by the way, in verse 9, you will notice that it has been summarized. Everything that God told Joshua has been summarized in, in verse 9. There are four basic commands, and these are, first, be strong. Second, is to be courageous. These are encouragements. God is encouraging Joshua to be strong and to be courageous. And there are also two warnings. Do not tremble. Do not be dismayed. My friends, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that you can all do this. That we can all do this. You got this. You got this. We got this. You know how I know? Look at the last line. Let's look at the last line. It says there, because the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. The Lord, our God, is with us wherever we go. If we remain in Him, He walks with us. The conditions for success are already written in God's instructions to Joshua. Follow the word of the Lord, our God, and he will make your way prosperous. You will have success. Now, success here means the accomplishment of God's purpose, and that success in our family life would be evident in our finances, in the way we carry ourselves, and in the way, most importantly, in the way that we bring the gospel of salvation to the people following his words can give us strength and courage that's beyond anything we can think of anything that we could imagine of i remember when jesus was tempted in the wilderness in luke 4 verses 1 to 13 he used the word of god encountering the ploys of satan there is nothing to fear for if we have his words in our hearts we know that through the help of the spirit of god we are all protected god's instructions will never fail if we follow it as i wrap things up let us be reminded that god is challenging us to step out of our comfort zones to serve him to step up to arise and be a powerful instrument in the building up of his kingdom. We are being commissioned by God to spread his promise to each and every one that we know. But at every turn, know that there will be discouragements, uncertainties, and hardships. But friends, let us all again be reminded of God's command and promise that when we are faced with fear, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord, our God, is with us wherever we go. And also, let us be confident in God's great promise when we are challenged to carry out his commission and his instructions for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Again, Lord, we thank you for opening our hearts, opening our eyes, opening our ears to you, Lord. Lord, may the things that we have heard, may the things that we have learned today be applied in our lives so that we can be prosperous and we have success, Lord, in bringing more people to your kingdom and that we could all be effective instruments in building up of your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the protection. 
And we pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our mighty Lord and our Savior. Amen. Good morning once again, Church. Uh, today is such a momentous occasion in the life of uh, SBCF. And we have the privilege to take part in uh, the commissioning of our dear brother, uh, Brother Jim, as he follows God in his walk to become a pastor of this church. And uh, I, I was asked to share a few things about uh, our brother Jim, right? And the thing that can come to mind is, well, I've known him now for about 10 years uh, or so. And I can say if ever there was a class that actually graded your Christian walk, I would say Jim would always be in detention. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen him grow over the years and really follow God uh, in his walk. And uh, it led him to the point where he uh, followed God's calling for him to go to IGSL and take a master's degree in transformational leadership with an emphasis in pastoral leadership. And uh, today, God has placed in his heart uh, the desire to lead a flock and to be one of the leaders of this church at SBCF. And we're here to affirm that calling. So I'd like to call uh, Pastor Mao to lead us in the ceremony. So, uh, Jim, uh, first of all, uh, we uh, thank the Lord for your life, and uh, we uh, thank the Lord for uh, molding you and shaping you to be the person you are right now. And uh, we appreciate your obedience, and thank you for responding to the call of God to serve Him in the full-time ministry. So, let me read this verse to you, uh, as you desire to follow God and serve Him in, in, in the ministry and shepherding in shepherding ministry. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. This is for you, Jim. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through the prophecy with the laying of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So Jim Brian Bitangkol, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will by the grace of God. Will you preach, teach, and be diligent in your study of the Holy Scripture? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people, especially the youth, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I will, by the grace of God. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, by the grace of God. Let us lay our hands to Jim. Uh, Jim Bryan Bitangkol, the Church Council of Subic Bay Community of Faith, appoints and commission you today as the youth pastor of our church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Tita Grace, let us pray for Jim. Shall we all pray? <clears throat> Lord, today we come to you with rejoicing in our hearts for what you have done to Jim. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for his life. Lord, we've seen him grow all through these years. I've been a witness to how you've touched his life. I've been a witness to seeing him from a baby Christian maturing spiritually and growing deeper in his faith. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be able to care for him, to watch him grow. And now, Lord, thank you for placing this desire in his heart. 
to serve you in the full-time ministry. We praise you and thank you for calling him, one of us, an SBCF by heart, to be able to help our church grow, to be able to reach out to so many people, especially the youth. I pray now like that you will lay your hands upon Jim even as he answers your calling to the ministry. I pray, Lord, that you will place in his heart this desire to serve you and to do, Lord, his utmost for your kingdom and for your glory. We just want to praise you and thank you for this special day. And we rejoice, Lord, Amen. and we all rejoice here with the church, seeing this child of yours now serving you in the full-time ministry. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and I commit to you, Jim, and his ministry. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. amen. Um, yeah, first, I really want to thank the council. Uh, thank you so much. Also, uh, our, our SBCF family for all the support, the love. And most of all, I will not be able to be here without God's grace. It's truly His Spirit that had enabled me, that um, made me grow. And I am looking forward to doing more of His will, especially in my ministry. And I'm looking forward to making dynamic disciples for Christ, for our church, and beyond. Uh, I would like to ask you to keep me in your prayers, that um, just to remember me, that to pray for the Holy Spirit to be always be with me, especially in, in doing my ministry. Again, I would like to thank SBCF, my family, my brothers, my sister, uh, my mom and dad who's in heaven right now. Thank you. God, all for you. All for you.
Praise God for that beautiful reflective song and it's nice to see finally our praise and worship team together in one place. As you notice, this entire online service was all pre-recorded here at our ministry center. And we thank God that we are able to do that. Just to appease everyone, be confident to know that we are following all safety protocols. Not everyone records here at the same time. You know, we come in different small groups to film with different schedules, making sure that everyone is safe, and we thank God for covering us with His protection. Now, before we end our service today, we just have a couple of quick announcements. For tithing, please follow the link in this video's description for detailed instruction on how you can send your givings. Don't forget, you also have the option to drop it off here at the Ministry Center every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Next Sunday, we will have a special online service with a new episode of The Good News Today. We had a whole lot of fun on the last one, and we're excited to share more good news with all of you again. So join us again next Sunday for The Good News Today. The following Sunday after that, we will begin our new sermon series, Season 2 of Intentional Church, entitled Breakout. And as usual, our service would not be complete if we don't recognize our first-time guests. So if you're worshiping with us for the first time online, we welcome you. If you would like more information about our church or want to know more about anything you heard today, please send us a message and we would be happy to accommodate you. That's all for our announcements today. Now, we'll go to Pastor Mao for our closing benediction. Thank you, Ian, for the announcements. You know, God has His way of encouraging and building up His church as Subic Bay Community of Faith. Now, let's end our worship service with this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace now until we meet again. God bless you all. Have a blessed week ahead.